We've got uh, our last panel for today with some key customers and technology guys, experts in the, in the field of media and entertainment. And of course, our own Ron Rogers, our Vice President of uh, R&D for our workstation business. Please help me welcome Ron, Vince, Ryan, and Gary to stage. <laughs> Mr. Rogers. Oh, you got a coat. You're, you're dressing up for us. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Looks better on camera. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> Fantastic. So let's just stand up real quick, turn around. Beautiful. Yeah. Third quarter. OK. Yeah. <laughs> awesome new products we talked about yesterday. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about technology. And you know, have there been barriers to entry from a workstation perspective in media and entertainment? What advances you know, that we've just introduced, obviously, yesterday? And certainly, um, some of the challenges that you guys, or maybe not challenges, moving from uh, a Mac environment to uh, HP Workstation environment running Windows. So just quickly, maybe you guys could just introduce yourself, tell us who you are, and a little bit about what's going on today. Okay, I'm Ron Rogers. I'm the Vice President for Product Development for Commercial Solutions. So I own the R&D teams that do the desktop workstations, the mobile workstations, and also the commercial thin clients. My name's Gary Adcock. Uh, my company, Studio 37, specializes in post and production workflows for high-end uh, episodic and cinema and feature films and those things. Great. Yeah, I'm Vincent Riesbaugh. I'm the director of visual computing for Fusion IO, and we make these uh, memory devices that are now available in the world. Show and tell. Yep. <laughs> Spring props. And I'm Ryan Brown, uh, independent filmmaker from Pacific Northwest. Fantastic, guys. Thanks for being here today. You know, what we're really going to talk about initially is kind of the importance of high-end visualization on engineering, architecture, and even media and entertainment. Ron, I know this is near and dear to your heart. Maybe you can kind of kick us off what your thoughts are there. Sure. So what customers are telling us about high-end visualization is that it's actually something that needs to scale as we see the increase in computation and performance and the rest of the system elements. You need a balanced system. Uh, so with the uh, introduction today of Ivy Bridge, we're talking about up to 24 cores in the high-end system. And what we see is in all those fields you mentioned, that with that extra computational performance, people are able to move models from, uh, in engineering for example, from components to systems, and they want to visualize that uh, as they're doing it. And what's really new in some of those fields, and you heard some examples of it yesterday, is that once they finish those models, they're actually taking it out of photorealistic rendering. And so visualization is even more important. John Wells from Morgan <coughs> yesterday talked about how they're using that to improve their workflow at Morgan Motors and how you can just imagine his, his team, his small team for the three-wheeler huddled around the display right. looking at it. And he talked about being able to look at those visualizations quickly, allow them to improve the design and improve their workflow. And in engineering, we also see people continue to do analysis. We just saw the example of the, of the CFD analysis. Uh, but there's thermal analysis, mechanical analysis, and as those models get bigger and more complex, you need high-end visualization so you can see the details yeah. of that sometimes. There's light on the stake, even. Absolutely. Uh, and in architecture, it's similar, right? We're looking at large models, we're looking at photorealistic photo rendering there, too, and uh, you're going you're to see real-time fly-throughs. Um, we had Philip show some of those yesterday for their programs, and uh, architects also are doing simulation. They're looking at energy flow in the buildings and optimizing for energy and, uh, and cost in buildings. So you're seeing it there. And then obviously, uh, in fields like media and entertainment, you're going to hear a lot from these guys. But uh, because filmmaking has gone digital, the ability to take those high resolution displays and visualization to the set is really important. Mm -hmm. And the costs are coming down. Mm -hmm. So you've, you've got companies like Bandito Brothers who have been using the dream color display as their camera monitor, right? Because with that larger display, they can actually see more detail than they can through the little display on the on a monitor uh, of a camera. And it is photorealistic, or I'm sorry, it's color critical, correct? And so what you see is what you get. Yeah, awesome. You know, yesterday we uh, announced we're uh, the only workstation vendor in the industry bringing Thunderbolt to market. And it seems to be a very incredible opportunity to start accessing devices at very high speeds. Ron, maybe you can tell us a little bit about the technology and, and why we went there. Sure. So we're excited about Thunderbolt and especially having it across the entire product line. We're, we're 
we have the Thunderbolt 2 on our desktop workstations with speeds up to uh, 20 gigabits per second. We've uh, actually measured peripherals, real peripherals that are doing 1.4 gigabytes per second transfer rates, and I'm sure over time that'll improve. So it's awesome. So there's really three things about Thunderbolt that I think are important. The first is just the raw performance. Uh, with the performance, you can take an example, I think was in the uh, demo room yesterday, you can take a, a 4K camera, convert it through a converter to Thunderbolt, play the video real time on a, on a display. Uh, so you've got that performance. And that performance also enables you to move large amounts of data. A lot of data these guys will talk about on set, and if you want to take a couple of different streams from cameras, you may have stored it on a compressed card, bring it into a system, do some simple compositing on set, you can do that, and you can move the data in minutes and hours. So, you know, it's, it's awesome that way. I think the second thing is that with that performance, you're seeing the peripheral vendors respond with large arrays of drives or solid state devices. And a kind of a 10 terabyte size looks like it's becoming common. There's devices all the way up to 20 terabytes. And with that storage, you can imagine that you can use uh, that large data in an oil and gas model or in a film or in other engineering cases where you've got those renderings and, and uh, be able to store that on a device that you could move around. Uh, and I think you know, that's the final thing is that the workflow advantage of having Thunderbolt and being able to move large blocks of data easily is you can imagine carrying the data back from uh, data input on a job site for engineering or from the film set, plug it into your Z820 where you have the capability with the A20 of accessing multiple GPUs, Fusion I.O. cards, 24 cores, lots of compute, hot rod, everything. And, uh, and so just the ability to move the data quickly is, is really important to transfer it between those systems. Sure. And in reality, you don't want to be taking four terabyte files and sending them through the internet. So, uh, you know, it's a problem that uh, the Thunderbolt really solves by making it easy to move large blocks of data. And for those folks that are carrying out models or carrying out visualizations to customers, uh, when you're at a customer site, you don't know what kind of internet speeds you're going to have. You don't know if you're going to have security problems. You can imagine having several different projects on drives and, and carrying around with you as you visit your customers. So I think it's going to revolutionize workflows and a lot of the, a lot of the burdens <coughs> for you. Fantastic. Gary, you know, Thunderbolt seems to be a game changer for the film industry. I mean, how, how is it? Well, as Brian mentioned, it's, it's, it's about moving data. When you start talking about moving you know, gigabytes of data, terabytes of data, um, it's not uncommon on a modern film set to generate a terabyte of ca camera data per day. So when you start thinking about that, you do a feature film that shoots 40 or 50 times what the actual runtime of the film is, and the film you know, normal runtime is between 90 and 135 minutes. So you start thinking about that, you're shooting 40, 50 times that, just to start, if you're doing documentary work, it's more like 200 times that. Wow. You're starting to massive amounts of data. Thunderbolt's going to give the power back to individual filmmakers like Ryan and, and, and the ability to handle all of this. But the real complement to it is it saves time. And one of the most expensive things on any production set or any production is the physical time it takes to do anything. Mm -hmm. And if you have 100 people on a set and you're waiting for them to do it, that's not how you want to be. Right. And Thunderbolt, from the desktop to the laptops, enables you know, filmmakers to do more. Right. And when we're talking about 4K, we start talking about 56 megabytes of frame. We start talking about 1.4 gigabytes per second, you know, uncompressed. And now we can handle uncompressed files natively on the Thunderbolt and move it from desktop to mobile, back to desktop. Wow. And oftentimes they're filming 5K or 6K, right. and then picking a 4K. And, and this is just the start, yeah. And then uh -huh. you're also changing the frame rate from 24 frames to 48 frames to 60 frames per second. So we're actually talking 30 to 36 times more data in, in a modern movie than a movie that was 2K that you can still go see theaters mm -hmm. these days. So the, it's an explosion of, of amount of data and the requirement to turn that data into information, to sort through it and pick the good parts and pick out the bad parts. It's not just about space. It's about being able to deal with all that. Well, it's also well. about redundancy. Yeah. Because, I mean, everybody talks about the speed of USB 3.0 and how great USB 3.0 is, but you can't put more than a single drive on there. Uh -huh. Now I can put array to array. I mean, Ron, your, your 10 terabytes is kind of conservative. Mine started, mine started 18 terabytes um, for my physical arrays that I use on the set. Wow. And, and we start moving data at 800 megabytes a second. 1.4 gigabytes a second. You're no longer waiting. Right. Actually, the, the, the drawback tends to be the physical media that the camera shares. Sometimes it becomes the limitation. Yeah. Wow. wow, that's amazing. <laughs> so, so yesterday, 
obviously we announced Ivy Bridge support for the 4, 6, and 8. And, and to me, that combined with high-end Kepler graphics from NVIDIA, all the technology, and certainly even the entry-level price points that we're getting to the point with good performance. Ryan, I mean, how is that helping change your, the way you work, and what is the benefit to your business? Well, I think the biggest benefit is the technology, the price points and stuff from business PC, like the high-end business class, to even like the entry-level um, you know, uh, Z stations gives the filmmaker the ability to do pretty much anything they need to do. I mean, even from the mobiles, um, I can totally see somebody that can basically get in a movie. Like you said, the Thunderbolt technology is open doors. Um, we're seeing so many new cameras that are 4K and beyond. Uh, the Blackmagic Design camera, 4K, $4,000. I mean, that's going to be the new DVX100 in my mind. I mean, that's going to be across the board. Everybody's going to be buying that camera if they're not already on like a red. Or, you know, the bathroom or something else on the high end, but for me, being an independent filmmaker, one-man show, um, we need tools that are affordable, but can also do just what you do. And we're getting to that point. I mean, it's not only just getting, we're actually there. You know, I mean, it's right here. <laughs> well, there was another 4K in a camera yesterday. There you go. Absolutely. And, and it's the week before IBC for the big media and entertainment show. I expect to be at least six more 4K cameras announced in the next 10 days. At least six. Wow. I mean, even the GoPro is 4K yep. now. So that's great. Everyone's like, oh, I can shoot 4K now. Yeah. Yeah. And try dealing with the data at the end, right? <laughs> right. Well, the way we used to do it was with your product, the yeah. Exactly. We, we, we handled things, being able to do it because that was the only way to get that kind of bus speed. And now being able to attach that to a mobile workstation kind of changes yeah. how everything works. And so, so let's talk about that, right? So we've had advancements in processor technology. The graphics guys are cranking everything out here on here. And I.O. seems to be the bottleneck. Well, now we've got good throughput with Thunderbolt, but what about the storage device? Yeah, exactly. You know, it, it really is about a balance in the workstation. And, and you know, CPUs, done, right? You have 48 threads, 4 gigahertz CPUs, and insane amounts of power. Same thing on the GPU side, right? The K5000 has 3,000 cores. You can add a Tesla to that. and 6,000 CUDA cores. And that's a hungry beast, and you have to feed that to make it worth it. So it's really feed the beast. You have to feed the beast. Yeah, it's, it's really performance is, is is a tripod. You know, there's CPU, GPU, and storage, and and storage for large studios has always been an expensive SAN on a network and, and and fiber networks and all sorts of stuff. Or you were stuck with a couple drives in a RAID, and then you need redundancy. And and again, that that's the speed. You know, that that was critical. So that's really what what Fusion IO does is is that. Um, brings that storage component, that third leg of the tripod, up to par with with the, the heavy GPUs and CPUs. Mm -hmm. And if one of those three components doesn't match the other two, you're basically wasting the other two because they're just waiting for data. And, and that's really uh, what we do. We solve the data supply problem. And the ability to take this product and put it right inside the Z820. And at Sirgraph, we actually showed, we showed eight of these in the Z820. And we were running uh, 24 terabytes at 12 gigabytes per second. That's 90 gigabits per second. Um, so enough for eight uncompressed 4K streams. But then you can take that card right out of your, your Z20, put it in a little chassis, and plug it in your Z-Book. That's spectacular. The fact that I can be on set with 1.6 terabytes in one of these, 1.4 gigabytes per second. I can shoot stuff, convert it, watch it, review it take out the parts that I don't need, so I don't need to bring back terabytes back. I can actually crop it right on set wow. and then put it in my machine and keep working. Oil and gas as well, it's not just entertainment sure. anywhere. And that's it's the power of Thunderbolt. That's what yeah. Thunderbolt brings to the table. It's no longer just a bus technology. It's, it's an extensibility that you've never had before. It's bringing the power of the desktop to mobile workstations. And it's bringing the speed and throughput that's required for the kind of applications that we're talking about right. that we've never had before. I mean, you're talking six years ago to do 300 megabytes a second, you carried around 200 pounds of, of storage and, and a you know, $1,200 HPA and everything else. And now you plug in you know, in the demo room the other, on the other day, it's, it's a GTEC drive. Right. It's, it's yeah. 300 megabytes a second over Thunderbolt. Or it's changed by everything. Or, or that. You put a little bit of a sand in your, in your jacket pocket. <laughs> <laughs> so that's changed. And yeah. It's the same thing there. Yeah. Supercomputer under the desk. Yeah. Well, the Z-Books are good computers now, and with the amount of cores you have in there, and, and the, the uh, dream color monitors, I mean, everything's there that you need, and it's, it's that storage part. The Thunderbolt really kind of is the key. Yeah. So, so let's switch gears a little bit. We heard from the guys from My Little Eye, where, you know, they were on their Mac Pro, they were using Final Cut Pro, 
and geez, they had two months to get this job done. They knew they couldn't do it, right? They just couldn't be as productive as they would as they moved to the HP workstations running mm -hmm. the Adobe Creative Suite, right? Premiere Pro, others. Brian, yeah. Gary, tell me, I mean, you guys have made this switch, right? I mean, what was it challenging? What, what has been the benefit to you and your business? Well, for me anyway, um, Red Shooter, um, besides just the data and everything, GPU and stuff is very important to me. And if you've ever opened up a Mac and look inside, you're looking at four slots, right? And so you got two slots. If you want to put two double wide GPUs, you've already wiped out three slots. So you have, now you have to choose between your storage or your I.O. Um, that hit a real bottleneck for me. And so easily you can just open up your uh, ZA20 and pop in everything. Like literally you can look online, you can see my site, iamfilmbad.com, or my blog, blog.iamfilmbad.com. And you can totally see how my transition from going from Mac to uh, to the HP, and how I'm just stacked up now. I've got like what, five or six cards in my machine. I mean, you can't, you just can't do that with a Mac Pro. And this new one that's come out is just, I don't know, I don't even want to talk about it. I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no cards, there's no cards, man. It's like everything's outside the box. And for me, GPUs should live in the box. I mean, that's where you need the power. Can you imagine right? the power supply is as big as that Mac thing that's coming out? You know what I mean? You need power to feed. Uh, these GPUs. The beast. So, the beast, absolutely. <laughs> so it's, it's really, it, everything has to be <coughs> balanced, and that's what you've done. Yeah. So it's, yeah, well, it's, it's, well, it's the same thing. I mean, um, my 820 workstation has two IO Fusion cards and two K5000 cards and 128 gigs of RAM. And I'm not here for fun. This is, this is work. <laughs> Don't send a boy. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. And, and, I mean, I started in the Mac world. I founded one of the original Final Cut Pro user groups. I, oh, I, you're the one. I write for Mac World Magazine. You can see my review of Final Cut Pro 10. It's still online for Mac World Magazine, where I take the task that this is a professional tool. It doesn't have any or anything else. But now we're talking about Thunderbolt. We can add IO cards and, and you know, the things from AJA and Blackmagic and Matrox that actually do video interfaces. We've got you know, interfaces to storage, interfaces to everything else. But now we've got this extensibility that changes everything. It allows us a power, and it allows a filmmaker like Ryan to build a professional level system without having to, have, without having to put in a full SAN and do HPAs and, and, and what has traditionally been expected of a, or, you know, a system like that. Um, I ran an issue last year doing something for IBC last year where I was doing a 4K 60 frame project, and my 4 gig fiber network wasn't as fast as my Thunderbolt, and it changed everything for me. Uh, and, and as a single user in a small shop like he is for those kinds of things, it's really the way you need to go. Yeah, because I mean, we need the power just like they do. I mean, that's the thing. We can do pretty much anything you can do. You know, it's just on a smaller scale. Sure. It's just I have to do more work. <laughs> <laughs> All by yourself. All by myself. But well, I mean, you know, obviously on set there's going to be more people. But in the lab, I'm pretty much working all by myself. Right. You know, I got a mobile in the uh, in the field, and I have it at ta 20 in the shop, and that's a perfect balance for me. You know, for a one man shop. You know, uh, you know, when I'm out in the uh, in the field, I'm able to use the dream color. I'm able to see the files, make sure that the files look good. Take those same files, and now with the Z book, we can use the Thunderbolt, bring that in, tap it right in to the Z820, and you're good to go. I mean, it's a perfect solution. So I'm, I'm going to see like I just envision like there's going to be a lot more filmmakers, and they're going to be like myself. I mean, it's a new trend because it's never been really available. We've never really had this whole entire system. It's a, it's a turnkey system. So, it's a so system. here we are. We've got tons of cores, mm -hmm. fantastic high end graphics from NVIDIA, right? <clears throat> optimized for the pipeline specifically for, for Adobe. We've got Thunderbolt. We've got Dream Color. What are we missing? Nothing. <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> Absolutely. We've got IOFX. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's a, it's it's a power to be creative artists. <laughs> and it's a power to be unlimited in, in what you do. And, it, and it's not just in the high end, end visualization side, it's actually for filmmakers and independent artists and, and, and still photographers and everyone else. I mean, it's the power to be creative again. Fantastic. Without limitations. Yeah. And, and the innovation that HP is bringing to the market is what's doing it. I mean, I'm, I, I, I'm so tired of doing running Windows on a Mac laptop to be able to do some of the things I have to do. I'm ecstatic to get my hands on one of the new Z-books. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So we've got all this technology. We're very unique in the industry with the technology that we're, we're providing. So why wouldn't people transition from their Mac to this environment? What, what's keeping them from doing that? Uh, 
My no. only reason is, what'd you say? <laughs> I said no logical reason. I, well, I mean, it's, it's yeah. fear. It's unknown. I mean, yeah. there's, it's, it's the history of Windows and, I mean, you know, anybody who worked in, in Windows 95 or XP kind of ran away from it. Um, but we were talking backstage about how the fact that I really like Windows 7, and it made it a very easy way to do it. And, and we, we also were talking about the transition from there to Windows 8. And I think people, it's just a matter of unknown. And they, yeah. they, they like that cushy feel Mac relationship, but don't realize they can still get that on Windows 2. Yeah. So when you when you made that first transition, you used the HP workstation. Were you just blown away by the performance difference that you well, had? When I when I got to the 8, 820, yeah, it did actually blow me away the performance. I mean, it's it's not your average desktop, so <laughs> it's 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 the kind of tool, but it's the kind of tools I'm expected to use. I mean, I'm not a, I'm not an average filmmaker. I get to work with the latest technology, the latest tools with, in the camera world. And it's important for people to realize that, that you know, guys like Ryan are not alone in the industry. I mean, everybody's dealing with this. I do 4K, 8K, 6K, you know, it's all normal for me now. I mean, I've been doing 4K deliverables for two and a half years, which is very rare in the marketplace. Ryan shoots 4K and he delivers in 1080 or 2K because that's the norm. Now we're starting to get to, you know, YouTube deliveries that and the monitoring, the monitoring is called up to us. We can now deliver this kind of content on a regular basis. Fantastic. Yeah, the amount of power required in, uh, to, to deal with this, we, we mentioned, is, is, is so much higher. And the fact that in competing uh, workstations, you could have half the cores, that's twice the render time. And you're now dealing with applications that have been optimized. You've got media caches that are built to deal with high-speed I.O. You've got GPU rendering that are ready to use those 6,000 cores. And you need the CPUs, too. So that's, you know, that's another critical thing. With the C20, you can have 48 threads. I can only get half of that on another workstation. So that's, that's key. That's, that's doubling the speed of my work. Right? So that's a well, not negligible. Like well, it also brings up the reason why we need IOFusion and, and Thunderbolt yeah. and other things. It's the faster I.O. to be able to support these cores. Sure. Because if the CPU is handling, the GPUs are handling all this processing, you've got to be able to handle the data. All of that, all of that disk spinning doesn't do any good if it's not actually reading and writing back to a file. Right. And, and that's where the importance of this technology is. Is it's literally taking us to the next level. Fantastic. Guys, this has been great. Thank you so much for your time. I, I mean, it sounds like we've got the recipe here. Yeah. Now we just need to go evangelize with all of us to, to tell the world that this is the hot rod, or the set of hot rods, right, for, for meeting entertainment. Absolutely. So again, appreciate your time. Let's uh, give them a big round of applause.